Officer sees something on girl's lips, immediately acts on instinct. He watched the teenagers pass him, some hurriedly, some slowly, most with necks bent, gazing at their phone screens. Then, there was a commotion from down the hallway, and one girl broke through the crowd. She was intent on placing one foot in front of the other, but she was fading. She stumbled, and when he saw her lips he knew. Roger Karen was pacing the hall, waiting for the slightest hint of trouble. He had been an officer for 34 years, and he had a keen eye for reading faces. He searched each one as they passed. He knew that the key to preventing crime wasn't a matter of being in the right place at the right time, it was all down to being constantly aware of his surroundings. He had to anticipate the action before it happened. And there was a strange tension in the air today. Controversial decision. With the recent security risks in American schools, Pascack Hills High School in New York decided to do something rather unorthodox. And they weren't the only school to take active steps to protect their students. But their decision to employ ex-police officers as a full-time security measure was not without controversy. Some people have criticized the school's move, stating that having full-time police officers may not actually prevent crimes from occurring, while others believe that having a policeman address criminal behavior at school may be missing the students' larger behavioral issues. Nevertheless, Officer Karen was here to stay, and one day he proved his worth to both students and critics alike. Officer Karen took his job extremely seriously. He may have seemed placid and easygoing to most, but behind his eyes the cogs were always turning. 34 years with the Woodcliffe Lake Police Department will do that to a man. He was equipped to face situations that would make the bravest of men crumble, but when he noticed a student acting strangely in the school hallway one day, he was terrified. 18-year-old Sarah Buzini was a diligent student. She had aspirations of becoming a police officer one day herself, but even she never suspected that a simple twist of fate might prevent her from ever realizing her dream. She wolfed down the last bite of her lunch and hurried to class. When she realized her mistake, it was too late. Karen watched the students as they swelled around him. It was the second busiest part of the day in the hallway as the teenagers rushed to reach their classes after their lunch. It was the crucial period when Karen knew he had to be on high alert. He scanned the traffic, looking for any irregularities, hands in pockets, suspicious bulges, strange behavior. Then, his eyes fell on Sarah. He saw her for a second as the crowd parted, walking with a slight stagger. Officer Karen took a step forward, but the mass of bodies blocked his view. Then he spied her again, picking out her bright yellow shirt in the distance. Her blue-tinted lips were silently opening and closing in an astonished O, and then she made a signal with her hands. Sarah took step after labored step, clinging onto the wall for support. Her lids grew heavy, and her vision was starting to go dark. She could feel herself fading as she struggled for air, her brain sparking as it burned through the last speck of oxygen in her body. Then, Karen was behind her. He wrapped his strong arms around her ribcage and lifted her clear off the ground. With a squeeze and then another, he managed to dislodge the French fry blocking her airways. Other students in the hallway stood in silence, shocked from their day-to-day -day school stupor. With an enormous gulp, Sarah swallowed a lungful of air and spluttered. Her lips started to regain their red blush. Her eyes looked up at her savior in awe. I noticed Sarah didn't seem right, Karen explained, she was stumbling a bit, moving very quickly. The closer I got, I realized her color was off. Bazzini ran up to me and started giving me the choke signal. At that point, I knew exactly what was wrong. And it was lucky that Karen noticed what was happening in the hallway that day. I knew it was lodged in my throat, Sarah said, describing the moment she realized that she had swallowed a large french fry and she couldn't breathe. My drink, which I had in my hand, couldn't get it down. She described the feeling of oxygen deprivation as a tingling sensation, and her vision became blurry. Thankfully, she spotted Karen standing in the hallway. Karen immediately noticed that there was something gravely wrong with Sarah as she was staggering towards him and turning an alarming shade of blue. She then raised her hands and clutched at her neck, and Karen managed to figure out exactly what was wrong with the girl, despite her not being able to talk. Karen recalls what he did next as the situation unfolded. 
I asked her if she was choking. She said yes, so I immediately knew I had to do something, he explained. All staff at the school have been trained in CPR and first aid, and Karen knew exactly what he had to do to get the girl breathing again. So he held her from behind, made his hands into fists, and squeezed in a thrusting motion. This technique is called the Heimlich maneuver. It was designed by American Dr. Henry Heimlich in 1974 and is widely recognized as the most effective way to open a choking person's airways. This movement compresses the lungs, which builds enough pressure on the lodged object to propel it out of the airways, but the American Red Cross has advised that this technique should only be used as a last resort. Karen describes the moment that Sarah started to breathe again with relief, I began the Heimlich maneuver. I gave her approximately five abdominal thrusts. At that time she began to cry and gasp for air. As soon as Karen was sure that the French fry had been dislodged, Sarah was sent to the school nurse for a checkup. Sarah says that she was understandably shaken from the ordeal and a little bruised, but she was found to be completely healthy by the school nurse and given the all clear. Sarah is extremely grateful to the officer as he saved her life, I couldn't make it downstairs to the guard's desk, and I couldn't make it to a classroom. So again, thank God Officer Karen was there to save me, she said. It's unsurprising that Sarah and Karen have become good friends after the incident, there's such a special bond with him now, Sarah said in an interview with CBS New York, he's a hero. But it wasn't only Sarah singing Karen's praises for his heroic actions that day. Soon, the mayor of Montvale, Mike Gasali, heard about the officer's heroic deed and dedicated a Facebook post to him. Excellent job by Hero Special Law Enforcement Officer 3 Roger Karen at Pascack Hills High School, he wrote. Shortly afterwards, the post went viral worldwide. The mayor of Montvale's Facebook post garnered an impressive amount of views and even Sarah commented, feeling very blessed and thankful. But Officer Karen shrugs off the praise and remains humble, saying that it was simply his duty to react the way he did, and he did nothing out of the ordinary. But, thanks to her newfound friendship, Sarah is more determined than ever to follow in his footsteps and become a police officer.